Hi, I'm Ewan. And I'm Sarah. And this is Popcorn, Popcorn and, and Cumin. Cumin, a transatlantic dive into film and media with a healthy side of unrelated nonsense. Hello, welcome to our mini episode, minisode of Popcorn and Cumin. So today, Ewan has the unfortunate duty of describing Saltburn the movie to me. I have not seen Saltburn. I'm one of the lucky few, it seems, who has not had to suffer through that, so I hear. So what I know about Saltburn is basically just that there are two somewhat shocking scenes in it. One of them has something to do with a bathtub and semen, and the other one is him have making love to a grave or something like that. So that's all I know. Normally, normally you find semen out at sea and not in bathtubs. Very good joke. <laughs> so yes, I would like to know how we have gotten to the point of him fucking a grave. You and please enlighten me. Language. Saltburn is a movie, a psychological thriller, black comedy movie. I guess it's sort of a movie that satirizes the upper classes in the UK and their lifestyle and how they're kind of detached from reality. I enjoyed the movie. When you're talking about... Did you? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a good... It was entertaining and I thought it had some... It created some interesting characters and um, I mean, I, I think the twists and turns were not quite as incredible as maybe people would have you believe. So basically, the, the main character is a guy. is a little little boy... Barry Keoghan, the actor, playing a character called Oliver Quick, who is a person, a boy at Oxford University, thinking entering his first year at Oxford University. And he's a bit of a fish out of water because he doesn't really seem to have any friends. And he seems to be, we've both been to, to universities. We've both been to two universities and really... I've been to three. Sarah's been to three universities, but only got two degrees. So unlucky. Mm. <laughs> He, he's struggling a little bit because he's hasn't really made any friends apart from this one dude who's quite weird and he doesn't really seem to like him at all and it's kind of understandable because he seems quite strange, his friend. And he is watching this popular clique from afar and he has this sense of longing, you think, to, to join them. The, the head of this is a boy called Felix, um, who is played by Jacob Elordi. He's the tall Australian guy, although he does a pretty convincing posh British accent in this. Yeah, so he's sort of looking on at this clique with a sense of longing. And then, lo and behold, one day he's cycling to his class at Oxford College, um, or one of the colleges. Felix is sitting at the side of a road and is like, my bike is broken down. Oh, dear. <laughs> What is that? What is that? No, he he says that his bike is broken. What down. is that supposed to be though? That, that was All more of like your accent sound the same. Was that your Australian or New Zealand accent? No, that or was your Cockney. South African that was accent? Cockney. That was your Cockney accent. Okay. Yeah. They all sound quite similar. Short me at geese. All right. No, his, his Australian would be like my bike is broken down. Skippy. <laughs> You just, for every single accent you do, you sound like that one guy from Marvel, the guy who's like a stone. Cork. Well, he's from New Zealand. Yeah, so the, but they all sound like him. He's the bit, yeah, maybe. The Cockney one can, unless it's really it bad. It can't? No, it won't. It can and it won't. <laughs> all right, anyway. So he says, yeah, he's like, my bike is broken down. And Oliver stops and he's like, you can use my bike to go to class. And he's like, oh, that is so kind. That's really kind. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And then that is kind of like Oliver's in. So Felix then sees him at this, there's like a sort of student union that they're always hanging out on. That's where he's looking on longingly at the group. And he's like, oh, that's the guy who helped me with my bike. Come on over. And he's sort of introduced into his group that way and, and, Oliver's an original friend feels a bit dejected by it, but you're Aww. sort of looking at him like you're a bit of a weirdo. So part of Felix's group includes his cousin Farley, who's American, 
and is played by a, a guy who was in season four of Fresh Meat, for anyone who's a Fresh Meat fan out there. Which one? Do you know when Kingsley gets in a relationship with a woman that he thinks is Italian, but she's actually Swiss, and then she wants him to convince her son to go to uni, and then... Yeah. Yeah, so it's her son. Okay. Yeah. Farley is Felix's cousin. I really hated him. He's one of these characters in fiction where you can kind of understand why they are how, how they are, and they're not necessarily evil or anything, but they just really, like, rub you the wrong way. Mm. Another example of this is Theo James's character in, in the Inbetweeners movie, who, I mean, he is probably more borderline evil than Farley, mm-hmm. but um, he's very, you just like look at them and you're like, oh, I hate yeah. you. I hate you. So Farley is, so Felix's family are, are very wealthy and like these upper class UK people. Okay. And we learn that Farley's family have lost all their money. And now he's mooching off of Felix's family. So he's kind of like this like hanger on and they like him a bit, but... Farley is Felix's cousin. Mm -hmm. And he already... Farley's family is mooching off of Felix's family, who they are related to. Yeah. Okay. Because Farley's immediate family are now broke. Farley's already developed a bit of an antagonistical relationship with Oliver because they were in a tutorial together and he was a bit of a prick to him. Okay. Then I think also Oxford is Felix's sister, who I can't remember what her name was. But yeah, she was, she's there as well. Yeah, Oliver's sort of been invited into this group. And then quite quickly, Felix seems to lose interest in Oliver and Oliver sort of feels him slipping away. So then he creates this scene where he makes, he says that, oh yeah, oh, I'm about to go home for Christmas, but I don't really want to because uh, my dad's dead and my my mom is a drug addict and stuff. And then Felix is like, oh, that's just so terrible. You should come home with me to Saltburn. Mm-hmm. And then Felix is all buzzing. So here is the the the, t- the titular character of the movie, Saltburn, which is in fact a house in the, ca- house? In, in the English country. Yeah. So at this point, what is the tone of the movie? Is it kind of dark and thrillery? Or no, kind it's, of ca- it's kind of like a teen movie maybe rom com sort of okay. vibe. It's like, I actually really like the opening where it's sort of showing the Oxford uni culture just because it's a bit different. I think Oxford and Cambridge, they're these like, these, like collegiate, <laughs> like it's a bit, yeah, exactly. It's a bit hoity-toity and more to, towards maybe like Hogwarts and this sort of like... Hogwarts it, isn't hoity-toity. It is a little bit. They have like houses and dorms and you like You had that these, in like, high school. Well, Yeah. <laughs> But that wasn't hoity-toity. That was rough and tumble. No. Yeah, at this point, there's nothing really untoward going on. Okay. Apart from Farley, who's quite annoying. And Felix is a bit, you're a bit like, this guy seems like too nice. And you kind of get the sense that he's not entirely genuine. He likes Oliver because he gives him his bike. And then, like, you can tell that he, do, he sort of starts to lose interest in him at some point. Mm-hmm. At this point, we go to Saltburn. Uh, Oliver doesn't want to go back to his drug-addled mother and dead father in Liverpool. <laughs> We meet Felix's larger family, which include his dad, who really doesn't have that much to do throughout the whole movie. I'm not sure if like his character is meant to be some sort of satire on these like upper class people who are, don't have much personality or something, because mm. he's really he's like there, but he doesn't really do anything of note, and he just is just yeah, he's just there. And then when when he does talk, he just talks about like really boring things. So mm. I'm not sure if that's meant to be a, a commentary about upper class people being boring. That was what I took from it. And we also meet Felix's mum, who is played by Rosamund Pike, who you know from Gone Girl, probably. Um, Did she play the Gone Girl? Yeah, she's the gone girl until okay. she's gone no more. So are we near the point of... No. Bathtub? We're getting there. Okay. Rosamund Pike's character is, is probably my favourite part of the movie because she has some like really quite good lines that you might have seen online where she talks about how people in from Liverpool wouldn't have rehab in reference to Oliver's parent. Mm. Um, and she says people in Liverpool would probably just go to ruin in, in, in absence of having rehab. Mm, and then, then she talks about how she was a lesbian for a, a bit, but found everything too wet and that men are lovely and dry. Oh, that's how that... 
works yeah but <laughs> okay. they're funny lines they're much better delivered by her than me okay they're well i say much lines. better maybe a little bit better de- delivered i like her character she's probably my favorite part of the movie and, and also they go they go to the, the house and they have to like dress up for dinner and it's all kind of strange and oliver seems to be like a little bit enchanted by it and but also a little bit taken aback by how kind of different they are and how formal everything is while they're at saltburn oliver kind of starts working his his charms with all of the family so he is kind of develops this kind of gossipy relationship with Felix's mom where he's giving her advice about her friends and stuff and then Felix's sister he kind of has he develops a relationship with her about and there's a somewhat I wouldn't say graphic but more graphic an idea oral sex scene involving menstrual cycles so that was one of the other things that you didn't mention that was Mm. I'd seen people being a bit thinking was a bit controversial like you see like the blood on his mouth i can't really remember i think i might have erased that from my brain to be honest but it was yeah that definitely happens then he starts kind of playing people off against each other because i think farley sees this happening and then felix asks oliver about it and oliver is like that didn't happen so he lies yeah felix basically says that he'd previously had someone else stay at the house and then that person had also had a relationship with his sister and then that made everything weird and then they're not really friends anymore and he didn't want that, want that to happen to Oliver. So he, he lies to him. And then he there's a weird scene. What it really reminded me of was in Rocky Horror where Frank and Furter like gets on top of both Brad and Janet in those scenes. Mm-hmm. And he's like talking to them like face to face. But I think it's kind of like it's silhouetted or something. Yeah, yeah, where the blanket is over them and it's just their shadow yeah. of them. So it's a bit mm-hmm. like that, but it's Oliver hovering over Farley, basically being like, look, mate, I'm going to ruin you if you don't watch yourself around me. Oh, so it's not in a sexual way. Well, he is naked, I think. Who's naked? Oliver, I think. And Farley's in bed, so... I'm and he sure. just shows up in his bed naked? Yeah, yeah. That's, for, that's why I remember, yeah. So that was... A little strange. Um, so he's he, and then he sort of threatens him, little... and basically, because Farley is like relying on this family's wealth to like keep up his like kind of upper class lifestyle. Yeah, I've also seen some analysis because he is Farley is black, whereas the rest of the family's white. There's maybe like a racial dynamic to it. Although I think I've read that the director doesn't want that to be interpreted from it. But okay. some people have said that maybe he intrinsically a, an outcast to some extent because of his race. So from this point. I think the next thing of consequence that happens is that Felix finds Oliver's phone and sees that he has a missed call from his mum and then calls her back and he's like, oh, I'm going to take you to your mum and dad's house because your mum just really misses you and she doesn't know where you are and and she's just, I just feel so bad about it. So we're going to go back to your mum's house in Liverpool. And then Oliver is like really against this. He's like, don't take me there. Don't take me there. Why do you think he doesn't want him to go there? Wait, is his mom the one who's on drugs? Yeah. Well, probably because he, he's embarrassed of mm-hmm. her. But we only know she's on drugs because Oliver has said she's on drugs. Hmm. And based on Oliver's other actions up to this point, can we believe everything he does? No. Maybe he killed her and she's dead. Yeah. Well, I, the truth is, in fact, that she's not on drugs. She's alive and well, and so is his dad. Felix has quite a shock <gasps> when he drives Oliver to the house where Oliver is like very much upset about this and doesn't want them to go and then walks in and they're both alive and then they're like asking him if they want to stay for dinner and stuff and then there's a very uncomfortable drive back where at this point the the family are preparing Oliver's birthday party and this is going to be this like massive upper class explosion um, incredible party I think it's like a costume party and that's all being arranged and Felix is like well it's too late to cancel that so you're going to have to come back to Saltburn and this party will go ahead but after that we're basically done uh oh yes I imagine he's not going to take that well no so the party happens Oliver has a confrontation with Farley again because I think before this Farley had been sent away or had left because he was getting annoyed by Oliver or because Oliver had threatened him then he comes back Oliver basically says you know Farley you're okay and then Farley's like you're not okay Oliver and Oliver feels like a little bit dege- dejected by that oh we skipped over the part actually the where he drinks the the semen laced bathtub water he, that's just basically is what it is Felix is like 
Um, what do you mean it is what it is? Well, he's like <laughs> he's like masturbating in a in a in a bathtub. Who is Felix? Why? Because I don't know. Because people one do does that. that. Okay, yeah. but but this isn't Oliver. Isn't there? N- well, no, but he's like walking past the bathtub bathroom, and it, he's it's like a jar, and then he looks inside and close the door, man. I think he like works what? out that's what's happening, and then Felix like gets out, and as the water is draining away, he like leans over the bathtub, well, then he, he sucks it up a bit of it. Why? I don't know. This is one of the the things as well where the relationship is not really clear if it's meant to be sexual or if it's like a sort of different kind of love or lust or just fascination from Oliver to Felix. So we see other moments of kind of obsession leading up to the digestion of the... Yeah, I mean, I'd say that's the most overt example. But I mean, the whole... thing is like sort of constructed around Oliver's fascination with Felix slash his family so there's there's clearly something that's drawing him to Felix and I suppose the obsession goes much deeper than Felix's obsession with Oliver which seems to be much more fleeting like oh this guy was nice to me and I'm gonna help him out and then I feel a bit bad for him about his family so then I'm gonna take him to my house. Felix's sister references that oh you're just his latest toy Oliver and Felix has done this with other people before and he like uses people for a bit and then he casts them aside and everything's a bit frivolous and disposable But how to him. is Felix using using Oliver? Because he he sees him as a I guess like a way of relating with people that aren't like him. Like he sees him as like the to- like a token working Poor class person. yeah person who has like interesting stories and everyone can like mm. talk to and go like oh that's and then they feel like they they relate to people uh, more like, and like James Marsden on Jury Duty. Yeah, I guess to some extent. <laughs> okay. it, I guess there's actually a parallel in this where Felix's mom has a friend that's staying with them when Oliver arrives at Saltburn, who they she also has a sort of crazy life, and they're like, "Oh, that's so interesting," but then they quickly become bored with her and then send her mm. away. So that bathtub thing happens mm-hmm. before he finds out that Oliver is lying. Yeah. And then they go back for this big party. Mm -hmm. So this party... How close are we to the grave scene? Almost there. So then Oliver has this confrontation with Felix in their hedge maze at Saltburn. (laughs) In their hedge maze. Yeah, in the center of the hedge maze. Felix, I think he's like making it with some girl or getting off with some girl. And then Oliver interrupts him. So he's probably a bit annoyed with that, about that as well. But he's basically like, I can't trust you anymore. We're done. Feel it. Oliver, I think, is saying, oh, I love you and I know you better than you know yourself. It's all a bit, it's a bit, getting a bit intense. And then it cuts and Oliver... It Wait, and all this time the person he's hooking up with is just No, I think she's ran away there. and oh. she's left. <laughs> then the party ends. They're, they're, it seems like their friendship's over. Oliver's upset and he walks away. Next morning... No, Oliver is getting up and there's like a scream or something. Guess what's happened? There's a scream. Mm, Has someone been killed? Yep. Felix is dead. He's like dead in the hedge maze. Felix is dead? Yeah. (gasps) They think it's a drug overdose. And then there's a very weird scene where Felix's mom just insists on having like a formal lunch slash breakfast where they like get dressed up as if like nothing's happened and Farley clearly seems like very weirded out by this that they're just like acting as if nothing happened and then when he clearly becomes uncomfortable and voices that Oliver then turns on him and is like I don't think you should be saying anything when you were the one who brought drugs to the party and then everyone like turns on Farley and is like I can't believe you brought drugs from they're basically alluding that Felix had taken the drugs that resulted in him dying and then that's Farley's fault so he gets cut off from the family. So Wait, but his away. family doesn't react to him being dead? They do they a little bit but they're way like... of, it's this like keep calm and carry on British like mentality that they like <sighs> go with. They're just like we have to not think about our trauma we just need to keep going. That's healthy. Well exactly it's not healthy but <laughs> and Farley he's American so maybe that's why he's like this is no this is no good. <laughs> Oliver manages to blame Farley in this in a way, I guess. Even though Oliver probably killed him. Well, we don't How know would he kill him? Okay. Okay, so the the next scene is the other infamous one where Oliver then goes outside and visits Felix's new grave that he's been put in. His corpse has been put in. And then he places some flowers and lies down, takes off his trousers and then starts humping the grave, which is very odd. Very strange. I don't uh, understand. 
So the funeral just happened. He's in the ground. He's in the dirt. And there's a headstone. He's Is that what he's humping? Is the headstone? No, it's like the it's like the soil. How? I don't know. He digs a little hole. He digs a hole. I think it's more that he's doing like a humping sort of motion. But and it's, he it's takes odd. his I mean, at this, at this point, you're like... Not only are you like a liar, Oliver, you're not just like a very weird guy. You're like kind of unhinged. Like this is beyond the pale. Like there's dancing on a grave and then there's there's <laughs> there's dancing on a grave, pissing on a grave, but then there's humping a grave. People haven't even, that's not even a saying. What is that even? That's not on a verb based grave saying. But so. what? <laughs> Why? I'm, I mean, you could take it as being a loving, very twisted way of I want, this is what I I want to be in love and, and make love to you, Felix. Unfortunately, you're now dead, so this is the best thing I can do. Or you could see it as being dominating. Like, F you. Yeah, way of, like, showing disrespect or, I beat you, Felix. That is disgusting. And from what I hear, that scene was improvised, which I don't, I also don't understand. Like, what was in the script, do you think? Just put flowers on it and like walk away? Or do you think it said like do some weird shit? <laughs> I mean I think it really And he was like weird shit. Oh, I'll pull down my pants and start yeah. humping it. I mean I really think it fits with the movie and character. So if I was like the director and he, like they came up with that on the spot, I'd be like, Yeah, go ahead, that's really weird, but I think it works with the movie I'm making. Can you so. imagine being that cameraman? Yeah. <laughs> just I would have to leave the room. Mm-hmm. I just don't think I could do Can't that. Can't you be laughing or disgusted? I think it's I, not a real grave, you got to think of it. No, so. I would be disgusted. Okay, I probably would be disgusted as well. I would probably do some to the people around me, be like, mm-hmm. what's happening? And then yeah. I would slowly back away. Yeah, you say like, it's, is it too late to fire this guy? He's yeah. really gone crazy. <laughs> or is it too late to quit this job? Mm. <laughs> and uh, imagine like, <laughs> imagine being the editors <laughs> of the film and then you're just going through and then that just shows up on your screen. <laughs> you're like, yeah. Why is the point what am I supposed to do with this? Completely removed from context, it might just look like a guy sort of humping some soil. Okay, so but it's y- not really clear that it is a grave. I mean, in the mm. move from context, you know. No, I mean, it, I never at one point... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it is, to be honest. So maybe you would be just completely disturbed the whole time. Anyway. I'm disturbed just hearing about yeah. it. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it is. it was horrible, you know? It was not great. Yeah. Next scene... Is, Do we even need to go any further? <laughs> yeah, we need to wrap this this sucker up. So Felix's sister, Venetia, who Oliver has kind of had a like, relationship with, he then speaks to her and she kind of is saying like he should leave Saltburn, but because Oliver has now winkled his way in, he's burrowed in like a little rodent into the family's consciousness. Felix's mom is saying like, Oliver, I just really like having you around and now Felix is gone. You just stay as long as you want. It'll feel so empty, the house, if you're not around as well. So he's clearly, I think her name's Elspeth, his mum. Okay. Um, he's now created this dependency relationship with Elspeth where she feels like she needs him around, especially in wake of Felix's death. And Venetia, basically, Felix's sister says like, oh, you're, you're awful, Oliver. You should go away. Does I don't she like know you. about the grave no, fucking? No, I don't think so, no. Okay. It doesn't seem like anyone so knows So even without about that. that context, she thinks he's awful. I can't... I think it's just like everything fell apart. I'm not sure if she, know, she knows that Felix... Or Felix told her that Oliver had lied yeah. about the his upbringing. But she did see him blame Farley very quickly. So her family unit is very quickly fracturing. Mm -hmm. And it's all happened since Oliver rocked up at Saltburn. Next morning, Venetia found in bathtub dead. Then things really start to fall apart. And Elspeth is then she becomes quite distraught. And Felix's dad is then basically takes Oliver aside. And he's like, Oliver, please leave. And Oliver's like, oh, well, I would leave. I really would. But... Elspeth, I think, needs me, and I just don't think I can go. And then Felix's dad says, "I will pay you to leave. I will give you like how much do you want? I'll take and and how and, much do you want to stop murdering everyone?" Well, Felix. Then I think it then cuts, and it cuts a couple of years later. I'm not sure if it says how many years later. Oliver's in a cafe, and Elspeth walks in. She then turns around and, by surprise, is like, "Oh, Oliver! I can't believe it's you. It's been so long." Seems so, it's such a long time ago since we had you at Saltburn. And Oliver's like, oh, 
Yeah, and then she's like, oh, I don't know if you you saw, but my my husband's passed away. There's it's just me at Saltburn, so you know it'd be nice if you would come come around because it just feels like so lonely. And then it cuts again. Elspeth is on like a, I think she's in Saltburn in a bed, but she's like hooked up to a like breathing unit. She's like clearly like not in a good state of health. And Oliver starts is like looking at her. And then sort of climbs up on the bed and starts like taunting her. And then I think he turns off her unit and she dies. And then the scene cuts again and he's, she is putting her will, like she leaves Saltburn to Oliver. So the end of the movie ends with this murder on the dance floor song, which went quite viral on TikTok. You've probably mm, heard it. Yeah, I think and so. And it's him dancing around Saltburn naked. It's just like a montage of him doing that. And then the movie ends. <laughs> so he, did he kill all of them? Well, this is where it's not clear. Because it. I think when he's talking to her while she's maybe not conscious in the bed, yeah. it's kind of doing cuts to things that have happened. So he poisons Felix okay. in the maze. He gives him a drink that's like laced with poison. So he does kill him. It's not clear if he was going to kill Venetia or not, but when he thinks she th- suspects him or something, and then she he, he does kill her as well, and then makes it look like a suicide. And he clearly intends to drive Farley away. It's not clear if he kills her dad, the, the family's dad. I don't think he could. He could. Yeah. I'm not sure how that would have happened. You don't know if he makes Elspeth ill, but I think he does then basically cut off her life support. Yeah. And he does plot the meet, the like chance meeting with her in the cafe. Like he does do mm. some manipulation to do that. The sneaky boy. Yeah. So he goes from zero, no friends, Oxford to hero. Pr- yeah, hero killed all the the family. <sighs> I was left not conflicted because obviously Oliver is detestable and horrible, but I did also really not like a lot of Felix's family and their like attitudes. Like clearly, yeah. like that's like the sort of comment. Obviously, they shouldn't be dying or whatever. But yeah. I was like, you, you're so detached from reality and the way you guys. The reason you, you were quite happy with Oliver being around is because it's like, oh, this is the nice little working class weirdo <laughs> who he's kind of like our pet for the summer and we can get some cool stories out of him and then yeah. make ourselves feel better because we're we're making his life better and stuff. That was all quite gross. And I think that was the intention. My other closing thoughts is that I thought that it was very well shot. It was very nicely directed. A lot of very picturesque, well put together cinematography off some quite disturbing images. So Ugh. that goes both ways. And I really like the, the music in it, a good soundtrack. You think it'll win any awards? No, it's not nominated for really anything. Oh. It was nominated for a couple of Golden Globes, actually. But It never won, so. <laughs> so, do you have any thoughts after I've explained that to you? Yeah, well, I know a lot of people who, which I understand, having seen the preview, I think the preview has more of the vibe of kind of what you described at the beginning, where it seems like kind of like a fun kind of teen film. And so people went into it not really knowing what they were getting into and then found it very shocking and disturbing. And most people I've talked to didn't really like it yeah. for that reason. I think I would have really, if I'd gone into it completely blind, which I, I tried to, but because it went so sort of viral, yeah, it was difficult to do that. I think if I'd gone into a cinema expecting it to be a rom-com and then I'd watched that, I would have been like, this is great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, because I was expecting there to be an uh, insidious underbelly to it, I wasn't that surprised when things started to go awry. And in fact, the twists in it, I kind of saw coming a mile off when I was expecting them to there to be twists. So Yeah, one of my friends watched it with her mom. <laughs> yeah, well... You'd be in a world of pain if you did that. It's, yeah. Well, it depends what like the, your mom is into, I guess. <laughs> God, don't say it like that. No, no, I just mean like <laughs> if a parent that doesn't really watch movies or anything and doesn't watch any dark, violent yeah. things, then they might be like, why on earth did you get me to watch this? Whereas if they do, it might be less damaging to your relationship. Yeah. However, there's still some scenes in it that would be uncomfortable to watch with a parent in any case, I think. <laughs> uncomfortable to watch with anyone, I think, really. Uh. Well, there you go. If you've already seen 
Saltburn, we're sorry you had to live through it again. And if you haven't seen it, now you don't have to watch it. So you're welcome. <laughs>